please join me in welcoming the champion of the 121st U.S. Open, John Rahm. John, how does that sound? Sounds good. <laughs> I don't know how else to say it. Um, I'm still a little bit on, on golf mode, right? Uh, I feel like when we're I'm in that mode, it takes me a while to to get out of it. Uh, it might not. It probably won't happen tonight. It might happen tomorrow. I don't know. At some point, it'll hit me. Um, but I'm still thinking that there might be a playoff. I don't know. I've been scarred before, so it's 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 incredible that I'm sitting next to this trophy. You know, um, a couple of weeks ago, I watched my good friend Phil win it. Not this one, but win uh, win the PGA, and I took a lot of inspiration from that. You know, um, I've been close before. And I just knew on a Sunday, the way I had been playing on the Sundays the last few the last few majors, I just had to be close. And I knew I could get it done. And I'm keeping that good Sunday mojo going. Uh, and, man, I got it done in, in a fashion that apparently only can happen to me at Torrey Pines. While you're in golf mode, talk about those last two putts. Did you know kind of what score you thought you needed to post? And, and what were you seeing there on those putts? So <laughs> when I missed my putt on 14, I told Adam, you know, it was a good putt. The one on 13 was slightly pushed. The one on 14 was a good putt. It's just point at grains happened. It didn't roll as truthfully as it could have rolled. And I told him two fours and two threes on the last four holes wins the tournament. Um, and that's what I set out to do, you know, and play four really good holes. Uh, and not that I was really thinking about it on 17, but last time I won here, I finished birdie eagle, and I knew I could finish strong again. I knew history could get close to repeating itself, and I was aware of it hitting that putt, and I stayed patient all day. Uh, I haven't made many long putts all week. I made one on Thursday on, on 14, but uh, that's the kind of putts I like, you know. Uh, I've made a couple of long left to riders in the past and some clutch moments, and I was able to get two more in the last two holes. People talk a lot about where they win their U.S. Open, and for you to win it here on your first Father's Day, is that just icing on the cake? Yes. You know, I mean, the, if you follow golf, I feel like you've heard it a million times how much I love this place, you know. Uh, it's been my favorite city for a long time. It was my wife's favorite city before we ever met. And she used to come stay at this Hilton before they knew what golf was, pretty much. Um, and getting my first PJ Tour win here the way I did with my dad watching. Uh, I was really happy my dad was here that time. And as a father on my first Father's Day, with my, with my dad here to get this one done the way I did, you know, on top of that, you add the fact that we got engaged here as well. And, you know, we have, I have a very happy life. I have, you know, I can say I'm extremely happy off the golf course, but this one might steal the show for a couple of days. <laughs> this is uh, very, very incredible, very, very hard to believe that something, some story of the, the story can round up and end up so good. It almost feels like this is gonna, a movie that's about to end and I'm going to wake up soon. <laughs> but, uh, you know, with the setback I had a couple of weeks ago to end up like this, it's, it's incredible. Uh, I do love Torrey Pines and Torrey Pines loves me. We're going to go to Adam on the right. John, how aware were you of the star-studded leaderboard and what was happening around you, and how did you keep your composure on the back nine? Well, I'm not going to lie. I was trying not to look at the leaderboards, uh, but the crowd was not cooperating. They were telling me exactly what was going on. Uh, so I decided to embrace it. You know, you see all these great names, and to, my, to myself, I thought, whoever wins this one is going to be the one who won a U.S. Open with the star-packed leaderboard. And... I just, you know, after I thought that, I went about my business. That was about the tenth hole. I know I had to survive the next two holes and hopefully give myself a chance in the last five. And uh, I did. That's. <laughs> it was something I knew I could do, and I was just focusing on each shot. And you know, I ended up getting it done. We're gonna hear to Doug. John, you, you mentioned Phil a minute ago. He had as, as much, if not more, talent than you when he when he turned pro. It took him till he was 34 to win his first major. I know you're 26. You're still young, but was there? Any part of you, this being such a funny game, that was um, not pressing, but but thinking more and more about it as you came to each major? No. Uh, it's funny how, you know, it, it's very easy to think, oh, well, only majors count. Like, it's easy to win a major golf tournament. I mean, it's not easy. That's why only a select group of people do it. Uh, and I feel like coming in here without having practiced <clears throat> much relaxed me a little bit. I was like, you know what? In case I play bad, I do have an excuse. <laughs> I have a bailout in case, you know, I can convince myself, like, hey, 
you know, I had COVID, right? Uh, <laughs> but I feel like it relaxed me a little bit. And ever since the Sunday at the PGA, I, I, I felt a bit of a shift on the golf course mentally. Uh, I still had that grit, but almost like each miss bothered me less. Um, I couldn't tell you why. I believe it's because I really set out myself to be an example for my son that he would be proud of. Uh, and I have, I've done some stuff in the past in the golf course that I'm not proud of and I wish I could eliminate, but I've accepted it. And not saying there's going to be smooth sailing until the end, but um, I feel like that Sunday of the PGA changed things a little bit. My, my mental game was really good and it was the same thing at Memorial. Um, you know, mentally I was really, really well and that's what allowed me to play such good golf and it followed into this week. In the past, I've gotten frustrated in the US Open. I've made a lot of birdies and a ton of bogeys and double bogeys, and I was able to kind of switch it up this week and actually made more birdies than, than bogeys and, and get it done. Congratulations. Thank you. We're going to take one from the WebEx. Um, knowing what you needed to do on those final few holes, how did you stay so calm? I mean, I might have looked calm. I was not calm. Uh, it's, uh, I wish people could see our heart rate <laughs> when we're playing in those moments because that was tense. It's, uh, it's going, but you practice to let your body basically take over, right? And, and that's what I did. Uh, I think the fact that I stayed patient and hopeful, and I believed that something good was coming my way, is what helped, you know? Um, I never lost hope for a second. I kept hitting good shots, I kept giving myself chances, and even when I had that lip out on 15 where you can get a little bit desperate, I just kept hitting good shots and almost made birdie on 16 and two ended up dropping at the end. Uh, my mindset was the same on the first putt on Thursday till the last one on 18. I mean, situation does change a little bit, but routine and, and really staying in the present is what helps. We're gonna go right behind me. Uh, congratulations, John. Um, I understand after the disappointment with the memorial, you're, I think in the scorer's tent, you got a phone call. Uh, wait, wait, sorry, I couldn't hear you. With sorry, that. I, I understand that after the memorial, on Saturday at the memorial, I think you were in the scores 10, I think you got a phone call from somebody that provided some advice on sort of how to handle it. Can you maybe expand on that? Who was it from and, and kind of what? I had a few phone calls. I had yeah. a few. Uh, I The first person who called me, that was in family, um, it was uh, right away when I was on the isolation trailer, was, was Patrick Harrington. And he told me a story in which he was leading by five after 54 holes, signed the wrong scorecard, and got disqualified. Uh, and he said he got a lot more from that instance. He learned a lot more than he would have ever learned from a win. Uh, Nick Faldo texted me the next morning and told me a story of uh, how he was winning a tournament. He was leading by six with six holes to go and got disqualified as well. And now he learned from that and got a win the week after on uh, – and I think it was the million dollar shootout in South Africa, I believe. I might be wrong. It was a, it was a, it was a big shootout. So I believed from the biggest setbacks, you can get some of the biggest breakthroughs. And, and that's why I stay so positive. That's why I kept telling Kelly when she was devastated about what happened in my family and everybody around me, something good is going to come. I don't know what, but something good is going to come. And I felt it today out there on the golf course. You know, I, I had in mind Padraig and... And Nick, when I was out there on the golf course a couple of times, knowing that, you know, they won, they won shortly after, and I knew today was my day. Right here. John, can you walk us through the putt on 18, and when did you know it was going in? Uh, well, I'm a field player, right? So I could tell you if we go where I was, the spot I was looking at, uh, but I, I don't know how far left of the hole it was. Uh, I think it was three, four feet left of the hole. Um, and, you know, I stayed positive. I watched Lee Westwood hit the putt to tie, to try to tie Rocco a couple of years ago on 18. And I knew at the end, it snaps hard right at the end. I know it does. It doesn't really look like it, but it does. Um, that's why Tiger's putt took so long to end up breaking left the same year. So um, I was aware of that. I trusted my read. And as soon as I made contact, it looked up and, and saw where the ball was going. It was exactly the speed and line I visualized. And I told myself, that's in. If you could see my thoughts with 10 feet to go, in my mind, I'm like, that's in the hole. And, and it went in. Right here. John, now that you're at this point, uh, can you describe what the process has been like of getting your temperament to match your talent? Well, I, I've said it before. 
I know it's hard to believe, but it's been a steady progress. Like everything in life, the setbacks, but I feel like from the setbacks, some good moments have come. Um, I believe becoming a dad was always going to help me because before I could always have the excuse that getting mad helped me out, helped me win golf tournaments. Uh, but right now, I'm a role model to my son, I'm going to be, and as I am to many, many kids out there. And now I understand what I can do, and I know I can perform at my best without showing my frustration so much. Uh, I made that deal with myself after the third round of the PGA. You know, I wasn't happy with how I ended, and I could have handled it better. And I bowed to myself to be a better role model for my son. He won't remember any of this because he's only 10 weeks old, but I do. And hopefully in the future he can grow up to be somebody who's proud of his dad, and hopefully I can provide that example. And, and can you describe this morning, when you, the, right when you wake up, where your mind starts going? I got woken up by crows. I don't know why, but <laughs> that's what I was thinking. I was thinking, man, those birds. Um, no, I mean, I did the same routine, you know. Uh, for people that follow this, and I'm going to shock a few people, I woke up excited because I could watch uh, a match that uh, – a Call of Duty tournament, you know, which was esports that was going on. Uh, a team that I follow, which is Optic Chicago, had just played and, uh, the night before, and I knew I could watch it. It's about an hour and a half, so I had a busy morning. <laughs> and uh, I went downstairs, you know, got my water, my coffee. The chef was making breakfast, and I was just watching my, my Call of Duty event. That's simple as that. Then Kelly came down with the baby, spent some dad time, and then got ready. I mean, um, I know, shocking for some people, but yeah, that's what I was doing. <laughs> We're going to go back to the WebEx. Was there a journalist you referenced during the award ceremony? And if, who, if so, who? I mentioned a girl, uh, a, uh, a girl, God, uh, um, a guy, <laughs> a good friend of mine. His name is Jose, was Jose Manuel Cortizas, Corti. This, this journalist, he basically did basketball in the city. I'm from in Bilbao for a newspaper. Newspaper. He followed basketball. And the, the owner of the, or the city of a newspaper said, hey, Start following this golfer who's doing pretty good things. And without ever hesitating, he jumped on a plane and started following me around the world. He had never stepped foot on a golf course, and he had no idea what was going on. Um, I think his first year was uh, my first pro year. Um, and unfortunately, that journalist passed away a couple months ago due to COVID. Uh, he was very quick, too. He was in good health um, from when he got it till the ICU till he passed, it was extremely quick. And he would have loved to be here. He, he had just started to pick up golf a little bit. He, uh, you know, he held me to a really high standard, always told me when I was doing wrong things and always told me when I was doing right. And, you know, he, he was, I was somebody I was proud of. I mean, he took a leap of faith to start following somebody and do your job, but do something completely different around the world, something you know nothing about. Um, at the same time, he has, I believe, uh, around a 20-year-old daughter that now has no dad, and it happened extremely quick. Uh, it, it's just sad, you know. He was a great friend, great family friend, and this right here is, is definitely for him because he would have loved more than anybody else to be here covering this. Doug on the right. John, the more I listen to you of, of your times or chances in a major, is this the least amount of pressure you felt? Yes, definitely. Um, just because it felt like such a fairy tale story that I knew it was going to have a happy ending. I, I could just tell, just going down the fairway after that first tee shot, that second shot, and that birdie, I knew there was something special in the air. I could just feel it. I just knew it. I, I couldn't have told you in the moment, but I felt something special. And that's why I played as aggressive as I did, because I'm like, man, this is my day. Everything's going to go right. And uh, and I feel like that helped me be calm. I just knew that I, I could do it and, and believed it. Seven pars on the back nine until the end. Yeah, I mean, pars are almost like birdies on the U.S. Open, especially what? in 11 and 12. Speaking of aggressive, the, the, what, what club did you have on on one that you took right of the flag? Eight iron. Uh, yeah, I was not trying to go at that pin. <laughs> I was aiming at the TV tower, and, you know, it's the three-quarter eight iron, knowing that my natural shot is a fade. I basically was a straight shot with that feel of a fade and ended up fading a little bit more than I wanted. Had a, ideally, that ball would have been 15 feet long right, but because I faded a little bit too much, it ended up being perfect distance. 
We're going to go back to the WebEx. What did it mean to have Phil there on the driving range when you found out to celebrate? You know, it's pretty unique that just a month ago or just a little bit less ago, I was there watching him win. And I was like, man, this is so cool. Uh, you know, I was part of an amazing moment in history for him and for, well, the history of golf, really. Uh, and for him to, to be there, you know, he probably was home and came over just, just to see what could happen. He told me he was going to be watching. He was on the putting green when I was getting ready to go to the tee and, and uh, wish me good luck. And, you know, for him to, to stay and come and, and congratulate me. I know he's going to talk to me at some point again because he hasn't had much time. But just the fact that he came, you know, he shows we're really good friends. We're extremely competitive. Don't get me wrong. We're extremely competitive. But when it comes time, we're really happy for each other. And I couldn't have been happier for him when he won it. He made history and proved a lot of people wrong. And in my little way, I made Spanish history. And hopefully I proved a lot of people wrong as well. Well, thank you so much, John. Thank you. We're going to go right here.